All right, this is the last one for Unit 2, Algebra 2. We're going to be talking about graphing linear functions and absolute value functions. Uh, no, inequalities for both of those. So this is going to be a lot review at this point. Uh, we're going to really just hit two examples, and then we're going to be through. Uh, so let's let's dive in. So without further ado, let's get into this first example. So we're supposed to graph... I thought I wrote that, but I get, I don't guess I did. The instructions should say graph, graph, this linear equation, <coughs> excuse me. So graph this guy. So we're going to graph this just like when we're solving an inequality versus solving an equation. We start out basically the same thing. So what we need to do in order to graph this guy is we want to get it into that slope intercept form. So we're going to solve for y. So Let's get y by itself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move that x over. So let's subtract x on both sides. Now, it doesn't combine. We're going to put the x term first because it's that y equals mx plus b. You don't have to do that. It's just, it's just a decent idea to be in that habit. So this turns into 4y is greater than negative x plus 2. Right? They don't combine. They're not like terms. Easy peasy. My marker a little bit bigger here. So we've got that four. We've got to remember to divide everything by four. That's divided by four, and that's divided by four. This cancels right, <coughs> right there. So, <coughs> gosh, sorry. We're going to bring down our y is greater than that. Now, remember from our inequalities, if this was a negative four, then this inequality would flip, right? We've got to remember all of the different puzzle pieces and all of the different things. So we've got negative 1. I'm just going to write this in the front here. It could be x over 4. That's the same thing. It's just a little easier to see writing it that way. They're, they're both right. And then 2 over 4 reduces to 1 half, so plus 1 half. So now we graph this the same way with one key exception, which you'll see here in a second. So we're going to find our y-intercept of one-half. So we're going to go and graph that right there. We're going to put our y-intercept there. And then we're going to count one, up one and, oh, oh, just kidding. I made a mistake, or I almost did. I said a mistake. <laughs> we're going to go down one and then over four. So down one over one, two, three, four down one over one, two, three, four. And then we're going to connect the dots. But instead of, instead of, eh, it's kind of close to straight. You'll have a rule. You'll do a better job than me. It'll be great, right? So something like that there. Now, unlike we needed this, okay, yeah. This, where, this is an inequality. So this is where it changes. First of all, we need to represent whether it's, you know, the greater than or the less than or the equal to, right? So if we're doing a two-dimensional graph, then if we're doing a two-dimensional graph, then we represent the one with an open circle and the other with a closed circle, right? So in this case, we do a similar idea. So if it is equal to, so if it had this, then we do a solid line. If it is not equal to, then we do a dashed line. So we're going to take out part of this line, right? So that's what it's going to look like, All right? Now, we also, in an inequality, we have to shade, okay? So it's the, the biggest place that I find people making a mistake on the shading is they want to think left and right. So they want to do greater than on the right and less than on the left. That's not the right way to think about it. You want to think about this as up and down. I think the reason why people think about that that way is because we're used to graphing stuff on a number line, right? And so right and left. So when we're graphing in two dimensions, we're talking about up and down. And we are because this is the Y we're interested in, right? So we're, the Y is we're shading greater than over here. So we want to shade, in this case, we want to shade up. Right, so we want to shade on the top. Right, so we're going to shade up here, all above. I bet we can do a better job than that, cause tools. 
right? Something like that, and then shading up here, right? Great job. So that's what this guy looks like. So it's just this line, like it was an equals, but it's shaded, and then but it is dashed because it is not equal to. It's only greater than, and then we also have to shade above because it's greater than. If it was less than, we would be shading below, right? So let's take a look at the next example. Next one is going to be an absolute value, and you probably could have guessed that because of the title of the lesson. <laughs> linear, it, it, linear inequalities and absolute value inequalities. So this guy is the same thing. So now we know from our parent functions uh, lesson, the last lesson, we know how to graph this thing. This is this is going to be using that absolute value parent, but it's going to be translated down four units. So the vertex is going to be down one, two, three, four units, and then it's it nothing has changed with the dilation or any of that. So it's still going to just be up one over one. So it's going to be like this, right, like that, right. So it's just like the parent shifted down. Now, is this supposed to be a solid line or a dashed line? It's supposed to be a solid line. We know that because of the equals to, right? Now we need to know whether we're gonna shade or which direction we're gonna shade. We're going to shade again up. In fact, actually, you know, I, if you're if you're taking notes in, in a pen, I apologize, but I'm gonna change this example last minute just so that you have in your notes two different ideas so that you can remember better what's going on. Let me change that to a less than. And so in this case, we're going to shade below the line this time. Okay, we're going to shade below instead of above because this time it is less than. So we're going to shade down here. Okay, so we're going to shade below the line. And all, you can get a little bit bigger brush. And I know y'all can't do this magic on your notes on paper, but you know, if we got the technology, why not use it? So it's the same graph, but it's shaded below because it's less than, and that's it for this topic. That's, that's really all there is to it. So this is a nice short one, nice, easy one. If you've got the graphing of these two parent functions down easy, all you add is dots and solid, and you add shading either above or below. Greater than is above, below is, is less than. If it's equal to, then it's solid. If it's not equal to, then it's dash. That's really all there is to it. We shall see you in the next chapter. Bye-bye.